the name coding scientist sounds very unique and you know uh, it's different so how did you come up with this name or basically why we need to stand out of crowd right you we we just do not want to be part of the crowd and run behind chase chase the same uh, uh, kind of stuff Hi Andrew, uh, how are you doing today? Hi, good uh, Mohit. Uh, thanks for inviting me into this uh, prestigious uh, interview. So I'm thanks. glad I'm part of uh, your momentum. Correct, correct. Uh, likewise, likewise Andrew. So uh, you know, let me set the context of the discussion first. Uh, so today we have Mr. Andrew Kumar, who is founder at Coding Scientist, right? And today we'll be talking about, or we'll be rather. uh you know gaining some insights into ai and automation in uh, robot platforms right so before we start the discussion uh, i'm curious to know more about the journey your background and coding scientist so if you can shed some light over there it will be great sure sure uh, mohit sounds good so let me start uh, with a quick uh, background about uh, my solution you know i i come with about uh, two decades of uh, experience in the software industry and uh, primarily i worked for fortune 100 companies like ibm hp netapp and a couple of others both in india and us right so uh, and also apart from that i have a deep level of uh, interest and hands on experience into robotics artificial intelligence iot and uh, you know embedded electronics and stuff like that so basically <clears throat> those are the areas which uh, i was doing that as my hobby during while i was working for multiple companies for last 20 years so you know for example during the weekends i used to buy components and start building some uh, robots and you know build some ai stuff host it into the robot and make things work so it was kind of a hobby and interest and it was kind of my passion you know and then over a period of time i did realize that Uh, several of my colleagues in my office where i used to work like ibm hp netapp they used to reach out to me and say hey anbu this looks pretty interesting man you know i want to buy this where do i buy where do i learn so people started you know getting attracted towards uh, the hobby what i had then that that actually made me realize hey you know what ai is the field which is actually picking up i'm talking about you know 2016 17 18 that time just before covid right Correct. so i thought you know this is the right time to start something on on my own because i was i was already hitting the roof you know sitting in a corner office and you know having an executive level of uh, uh, you know role in ibm it was kind of you know i would say it was a kind of boring and it was kind of saturating and you know it was not kind of th- th- there were no more challenges right so that's where i thought let me you know float something on my own i want to convert my own skills and try to monetize and try to evangelize my skills across the community and that's the birth of coding scientist you know that that's my own company which is basically a bootstrap we are currently bootstrap and uh, we started this company mid of uh, last year probably end of last year 2021 actually we went live a couple of months back right and i have a co-founder by name uh, roslyn she she is the she is basically the chief design architect and she takes care of the design and user experience and stuff like that unfortunately she is not with me right now she has been traveling or else i would have brought her into this uh, forum so we both are running this particular uh, platform coding scientist so basically you know let me just give you a brief about uh, what exactly we do so we we basically believe that you know the indian education system right both schools and colleges needs a significant shift from scoring high marks to a skill based approach so what this means so if if you look at any average student anybody in the school or or even in the college they'll say that hey i want to score 100 out of 100 in mathematics i want to score 100 out of 100 in physics i want to score you know sent them in uh, english right so it is is just all about scores but actually if you deep dive into their hands on skill it's basically you know i would say zero right they they really don't have skill they just mug up what is written in the book they appear for the exam and they just try to score so we want to change that you know we we want to build an ecosystem in the education industry where every individual is going to be more pure play into skill based development now let's talk about the skills right what are the skills which is in demand in the industry today 
people are talking about AI, which is probably going to exist, you know, probably for next 10 years. This includes machine learning, deep learning, and uh, robotics, right? Now, robotics is a different beast altogether, which includes electronics, embedded electronics, programming, mechanical stuff, and, and, and also part of AI, which, which, which involves in building a robot, right? So we are trying to combine the holistic view of machine learning, deep learning, AI, and robotics together as a platform to build skills at a very early stage in the school level itself. So that's the ultimate goal. Right, so that that's that's the birth of coding scientists, and that's what we that's what we are focusing on, and it's so far it's going pretty good. And that's that's quite interesting, and you know the thing that you said is completely correct. That you know presently the schools are not focusing on uh, you know the live aspect of it. Rather, it is all bookish knowledge that we have, right? And the practicality or the implementation bit is uh, something which we are lacking, right? So, exactly. so the vision vision that you have uh, for for the you know ecosystem or, or education industry as a whole is quite inspiring, right? Now, uh, you know the name coding scientist sounds very unique and you know uh, it's different. So, how did you come up with this name, or basically why? Yeah, so so you know one one of my uh, always uh, my thoughts has been that we need to stand out of crowd, right? You, we, we just do not want to be part of the crowd and run behind, chase, chase the same uh, uh, kind of stuff, right? So I, I was always thinking about a different kind of name. So that's where this coding plus scientist. Now, if I talk, talk about scientists, right, this includes multiple various dimensions of science, which includes electronics, mechanical, computing, you know, data science, and everything all includes science, including physics, chemistry, maths, right? And coding, of course, coding involves a high degree of understanding the logics and uh, stuff like that. So we thought, okay, coding scientists, it looks unique and different and, and the branding will look grand. So we, I just came out of the name coding scientist and, and uh, myself and my co-founder, Rosalind, had been discussing about, uh, you know, the logo and stuff and how it looks. And we had a pretty uh, lengthy uh, discussion about uh, coding scientists as a name itself. And we thought that this would be the ideal approach, and uh, we just we just went on, went about it. Interesting, right, right. So uh, basically, can you give me an overview of the industry size and what are the market dynamics that play a pivotal or a vital role in this this industry particularly? You know, if, if you if you look at the entire Indian ed tech industry, I, I'm talking about the ed tech space, right? That industry alone received almost about twenty billion dollar of venture capital funding, uh, you know, till about last year, till twenty twenty one, which is actually you know thirty two uh, about thirty five to thirty six percent increase from uh, five hundred million dollar, which happened in 2010, 11, and twelve, right? So it's a significant increase in the tech space. Now, what what are the key driving factors? I, I can talk about that. So basically, the growth in this industry is driven largely by the K twelve uh, segment, which is basically higher education and the upskilling categories, right? So when when I say upskilling categories, we are we are not restricted to just school kids and colleges. This includes the PhD professors uh, who are teaching engineering uh, graduates. Now, PhD professors they might have a PhD, but they might lack the actual hands-on skills, right? They might just go by the academics and stuff. So we are trying to uh, build their skills up to meet with the industry part. So that's that's what is actually driving. Now, the in Indian education, the education industry itself in India has witnessed a maximum disruption during pandemic, especially, right, after 2019. Now, if, if you look at uh, education today, it's, it's, it's no, no, no longer restricted to just a kind of classroom or traditional classroom wearing uniforms and carry your lunchbox and stuff like that. So the restrictions imposed by the government and, uh, and, and the safety protocols, the cybersecurity protocols has opened up a new wave, the online education system, that's the ed tech industry. And India is just about four to 5% of the market has been tapped so far. So there's a huge amount of potential still yet to be done. And this is just India so far. The interesting stat to note over there is the potential that is tapped market is just four or five percent, as you mentioned, right? So so and still the valuations are uh, you know touching the sky, correct? Basically, yep. that that is something which is very very uh, you know intriguing figure for me as well. So uh, that's that's quite interesting. And now you touched upon this a bit, like what are the key driving factors for e-learning industry in India? 
right yeah so th there are there are multiple uh, factors uh, mohit right so some of the growth uh, drivers if you, if you look at it that's the low cost initiative right that that's number one uh, let me give an example say for example the online skill enhancement courses are more affordable very economical than the offline alternatives for many middle class families especially since most of them are freely available right so so anybody can log into go to udimai and look for ton loads of free courses anybody can get into uh, you know uh, youtube and look for you know millions and billions of videos which are available right so many of this uh, prestigious universities such as uh, harvard or berkeley in california or or even uh, boston university they are facilitating ton loads of online courses which is which is basically making wide wide impact globally so low cost initiative is the number one growth driver and then of course the quality of education that that makes a significant shift right compared to the offline versus online right so online basically you can you can turn around and see 360 degree view of a particular topic so let's say artificial intelligence that will drive down into machine learning deep learning and everything is available online you just need to consolidate and uh, bring in a kind of zero to hero kind of approach for the students who are opting for courses so that's that's one of uh, the growth drivers and the most important aspect especially in india is the government initiatives right so our central government uh, thanks to mr modi who has been uh, pushing really really hard to digitize uh, india right so such as uh, swayam you know one of the biggest uh, platform by by the central government the e basta the rashtriya uh, rashtriya mahabhik uh, siksha abhiyan so that's one of the other platform by the government and then the skill india and the digital india will, will basically make a way for the infrastructure needed by the students so if if you look at uh, you know go back uh, 3 4 years 4 5 years back the penetration of the internet itself was not that viable in tier 3 and tier 4 cities like villages and kind of thing correct but today today if you see you go to the remotest part of the village in india i mean a village guy who's totally uneducated you know he might be going in a buffalo cart or a bullock cart he's holding a smartphone with a geo connection right he's got an internet and is looking at uh, youtube so that's the power we have so we we got to actually leverage those internet speed and the bandwidth available across india and we and, and, and that's a big market right that that's where we are trying to reach out so one of our focus coding scientists is to you know get into tier 3 tier 2 tier 3 uh, areas of uh, india and uh, pick up uh, students who are actually brilliant they want to do something on on their own but they are not able to you know it's unaffordable or, or they don't have the facility and kind of thing so we want to groom those kind of uh, kids and bring them up to uh, up to meeting industry standards right and a couple of other things as i said the increasing internet penetration is one of the key drivers and then the, the most important aspect is the disposable income right that that's the large fraction of the indian uh, youth population that's one of the key drivers which is driving which is going to drive this edtech uh, education system across uh, india especially the e-learning e uh, platform correct yeah correct. And, and of course there are also you know though there are a lot of uh, key driving factors and stuff there are also challenges right now now if i if i have to talk about the challenges it's like uh, for example let's say uh, free content right youtube and stuff like that so making a decision by a parent or or even an adult it's very difficult for for them to show to the kid that hey which is right and which is wrong because for example if you type say artificial intelligence in youtube it's going to show up millions of millions of stuff at the same time there are also you know wrong types of videos in uh, youtube right so so that those are some of the challenges which 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 got to be addressed over uh, over a period of time and i'm sure there should be some methods in place that brings me to my next question like you know what is the solution that you are offering and how is it different from other players who are out there in the market for battle right so there are certain things which uh, i may not be able to uh, disclose at this point of time we have certain uh, usp right now maybe a little bit i can disclose say for example one of the usp is zero to hero it, this is our tagline so when i say zero to hero we take a student as a let, let's assume there is a pipe right this is the pipe a student comes in as a zero and by the time he comes out of the pipe he's going to be a hero so what does what exactly that means which means that it's not required that individual has to have a kind of engineering degree or, or a PhD or kind of thing to get into AI and robotics. No, we have proved even an eighth standard kid or a seventh standard kid who came in, 
who started learning programming from C, C++ fundamentals, and then Python, then moved up to understanding the data structures, got into the data stuff, and then we talked about uh, you know uh, the electronic stuff and got into AI, started building AI application, you know, hosted that into the platform, the edge computing platform, and then hosted into AWS. All those things we have students from eighth and ninth grade who are just playing around, you know. So that's that's what the thing we are focusing on. It's absolutely zero to you. That's interesting. So so you are uh, catering to to you know the market where people do not have any understanding, rather and and give them the understanding from the scratch and take it up, right? Correct. Correct. It, it, it's it's both the way. So for example, uh, recently I had been visiting a couple of uh, engineering uh, uh, institutes in in Bangalore. So. We, we get requests from uh, the PhD professors who are actually professors who are teaching engineering uh, stream for, for, the, for the students in engineering college. So my students are PhD professors. So that's one set of our customer who basically want to connect with the industry and try to understand uh, real world artificial intelligence applications or robotics, how it works, or how to deploy uh, AI in a robot, right? So those kind of hands-on session we give to provide to the PhD professors so that they in turn consolidate those things into their curriculum and deliver back to their students. So that is one set of uh, target audience. And the other set, as you rightly said, zero to hero, we take students from, you know, at a zero level, you know, regardless of the age, you know, and and, and over a period of time, we, we mentor them, guide them, coach them to be on par with the industry standards. Correct. Skills, basically. Correct. Yeah. So we are purely focusing on skill-based learning, right? And hands-on right. or practical uh, implementation bit of it, right? Absolutely. Interesting, right. So what is the contribution that you have made in the industry? Like, you know, I'm sure that you have been in this industry since past couple of months or so you started recently, but I'm sure there might have been a lot of research behind it, right? And so what is the contribution that, uh, you know, you have made in this industry. So, yeah, so we, we are in the market for last about, as I said uh, before, just about six, eight months up, right? So we are building traction through our uh, YouTube channel. And parallelly, right now, we are we are in the process of building our own edtech uh, platform. It's going to be a dedicated platform, which is not ready yet. It, it, it requires a lot of uh, software development uh, activity. Still, it is going on. So personally, at my personal level, what I'm doing is, I so far, I skilled up about 320 students uh, so far, which is, which includes uh, students from India, US, Brazil, Colombia, Singapore, and Germany. So from these areas, I get uh, requests and you know they, they log in, I, I, I schedule a Zoom call or get into WhatsApp, discuss with them, show them hands-on, walk them through step-by-step. Step. So about 320 students so far, that is the end user point of view. At the same time, on the other side, the PhDs, you know, I may not be able to disclose the names of the university, but about 16 different universities I, I have uh, trained personally. I get involved personally and go there, meet them, train them, conduct a classroom session, give them hands-on uh, stuff, and, you know, that's that's where uh, we are heading towards. Once our edtech platform is up and running, everything is going to be online. Interesting. Interesting, right? So, uh, you know, where do you position yourself in the next three years or probably... Uh, coding scientists yeah so three years i would say it's pretty long you know we, we have a very uh, aggressive plan probably by end of this year end of 2022 we would like to make 10x of what we are doing currently so considering the volume volume of interest we are generating around the world not just india of course india is our primary market and the focus area but apparently we started getting inquiries from around the world right so our goal is to become the star watch the king of uh, ai and robotics education platform in the planet right in the next probably 24 months, less than 24 months. So if, if you look at the edtech uh, industry Mohit, overall, you know, there are multiple platforms in the market. Some of them, they focus on say K-12 education, you know, for example, 12th mathematics, physics, chemistry, or biology. Some of the edtech platform, they focus on only on coding aspects. So they are really good on that. Some of them really good at mathematics, but there is no dedicated and consolidated platform for AI robotics exclusive. So that's the niche area we are focusing on because that is our strength. That's our core strength. If you ask me to me to teach mathematics, I may be good, may not be good, right? So we want to leverage on our strength and focus on that particular area. Correct, correct. That's interesting. And then, you know, the, the kind of uh, growth that this industry has seen, the, the numbers are quite realistic. And I I uh, am sure you'll be able to achieve that uh, by the end of the year, at least, right? So uh, that's, that's about it from my end. Uh, so it was nice having you here, Andu. Sure, Mohit. It was uh, great talking to you. And uh, yeah, see you next time.
Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.